Up until now, we've looked at derivatives of specific inverse functions, such as inverse sine or inverse cosine or natural log. And the question is, is there something general we can say about the derivative of any inverse function? Well, kind of. We can talk about the derivative of an inverse function at a specific point. There's a theorem for that, and using the theorem is a lot easier than it would appear from looking at the theorem. So here's the theorem. Okay, the theorem says that if f of x is a one-to-one -one differentiable function, and f prime of f inverse at the point a does not equal zero, then f inverse is differentiable at a, and that derivative, f inverse prime at a, equals one over f prime of f inverse of a. Now, this is the kind of theorem that's much easier to use than it is to gain an intuitive understanding of what's going on and how it works. There's a relatively nice proof of this that involves the limit definition of the derivative. I won't provide it here. I might eventually put into another video. But what I want to focus on here is using this theorem on a few examples. The reason why this theorem is important is not so much because we want to sit around and compute the derivative of inverse functions at a single point, because that really doesn't tell us that much, but rather this result is used later in calculus to prove other results that are important. So you kind of keep it in your back pocket so that when you see it later, you essentially know where it came from. So let's see how this works on some examples. Now, luckily for these examples, we just need the result of the theorem. So I'm not gonna worry about all the hypotheses here. I'm just going to grab this boxed result and use that on these exercises, just to get a feel for how this works. So here we have three examples of finding the derivative of an inverse at a point. Let's take a look at part A. It says, for f of x equals x squared plus one, find f inverse prime at the point five comma two. Okay, so again, we have our trusty formula here that was the result of that theorem we saw previously, which is f inverse prime at the point A equals one over f prime of f inverse of A. So let's, let's figure out what these things are. The thing to understand about these is that when we're talking about the inverse function prime, this point refers to the inverse function. Uh, I think that's one of the most challenging things that really gets everything tripped up here, which is why I like this particular formulation of the inverse, because it helps us deal with which values of these are x and y. So this five comma two is seen from the inverse's point of view. So five is the a, which tells us that the other point two must be f inverse of a. Okay, so that's how you nail down f inverse of a if a point is given. If a point's not given, you have to do a little bit more work, but in this particular example, all the points are given, so we're in luck there. But in this particular series of examples, all the points are given, so we're in luck there. So we have our a, five, our f prime of a, which is two. Okay, so we're making progress here. So back to our theorem result here, f prime, this is our regular function. So we have f of x equals x squared plus one. It's just the old simple derivative. f prime of x is then two x plus one, two uh, x, two <laughs> x. Keep my derivative straight there. Well, we already decided that this whole bit inside here was two. So it's asking us to do f prime of two. Well, I'll go over here with it. f prime of two, well, that's simply two times two, which is four. And then back to our theorem again, we want one over that. So then our final result here, I'm kind of working from right to left, f inverse uh, prime at the point five, is one over two times two, which is four. So one fourth. And that's the derivative that we're looking for. Let's look at part B. It says for f of x equals four e to the 10x, 
find f inverse prime at the point four zero. Okay, well here's our theorem so we can work directly off of that. Again, this tells us how to find the derivative of the inverse function at a point a. Well, once we have this, we're gonna work on the right hand side here, we're gonna work from the inside out. So first, f inverse of a. Okay, well, a point is given, so we're in luck. So this four is our a, which tells us that zero is f inverse of a, or f inverse of four in this case. Okay, so we already know that this bit here inside these parentheses is zero. Okay, well now we need f prime of it. Well, f prime refers to the original function, so we just need the prime of that, the derivative of it. Okay, we can do that. For f of x equals 4e to the 10x, f prime of x is, okay, well, 4e to the 10x again times what? Times 10. Don't forget the chain rule there. So that's 40e to the 10x. What do we do next? Well, we evaluate this derivative at the point right, of x, but the thing we're putting into it is this zero here, because it's f prime of zero. Okay, so plugging in zero, we have f prime of zero is, all right, 40 e to the zero, which is 40. And lastly, we take one over that. So our final result is f inverse prime at the point four is one over 40. And there's our derivative. Now what's cool about this is that we don't actually have to compute the inverse function to find the derivative of the inverse function at a point. Right, note that we're never actually computing the inverse function. We could with these, right? We could do that all day. We know how to do that, right? You switch the x and y, solve for y, all that stuff, or however you've been doing it. But it's kind of cool that we don't actually have to do that here. That's the good news. The bad news is that this is only good for one point at a time. So it's not a very general theorem, but it does allow us to get at the derivative of the inverse function at a point without having to compute the whole inverse function. Okay, let's look at C. We have for f of x equals square root of x, find f inverse prime at the point two, four. Okay, well, I've had a lot of fun with this. Why don't you give this one a, a shot? And then we will work it together and see where things stand. I will bring this theorem in here so you can work right off of that. Pause the video, give it a shot, and then we'll work it together. So this theorem is most useful if you work from the inside out. So let's begin with computing f inverse of a. Right, well, if we were to put the point two, this, this f inverse is operating on this point two, four. So if we were to put two into it as a, out would come four, f inverse of a. Think of f inverse as, a, as just a regular function. You have an input and an output. Two goes in, four comes out, right? We're not trying to think of it as some backwards function or something here. We're just thinking of it as a normal function with an input a and an output f inverse of a. Next, we need to compute f prime of x and that's based on the original function f of x, which is given as square root of x in this case. So f prime of x, okay, so let's, let's just be clear. f of x is the square root of x, square root of x. So f prime of x must be one half x to the negative one half. That's the power rule, All right? It might be better if we write this as one over two rad x. I don't know if that will be helpful or not. Well, what do we want to plug into this? F prime of what? Of four, right? Because we decided that this whole thing inside the parentheses, we decided that was four. That came from up here. So then F prime of four is one over two times rad four, which is two, which is one fourth. And finally, we take one over that to get our end result so that tells us that f inverse 
prime at the point 2 is 1 over 1 over 4, which of course is 4. So as long as your brain doesn't melt when you see this formula, once you start to use the formula, it's actually not too bad at all.